30 Days, written by Jackie Lawrence, read by Denise Welsh. Val's fingers hovered over her keypad. She was about to sign up for something to do with sex. Val, mid-50s, admin officer, divorcee, single mother of a teenage son, signing up for something to do with sex. She looked up at the ceiling. She could hear that very same teenage son clumping around upstairs in his bedroom, no doubt after having had some form of sex himself, either on his own or with the legions he claimed to have as online girlfriends. She paused and peered at her reflection in her laptop screen. She didn't give the impression of someone who had a sex life. That's because she didn't, not yet anyway. She'd been divorced, single, solo, whatever you wanted to call it, for years now. Yes, there'd been the odd date with divorced dad set up by her mates at the school gates, but nothing that had involved more than snogging. She just hadn't had the time to exchange bodily fluids with someone. You know, bringing up a son on her own, full-time job, ageing parents, millions of friends. Well, not millions, but enough to make her thumb numb from all the bloody texting. Maybe the menopause might have had something to do with it. She just didn't know. If Val had known what a libido had felt like, then she'd have known when she lost it. But to be honest, too busy for sex had morphed into who needs sex and then what is sex? Then suddenly, out of the blue, a libido was back, unannounced. She woke up one morning and there it was sat at the end of her bed with its arms crossed and looking at her as if to say, now what? Metaphorically speaking, that is. It was like an old school friend popping up on Facebook and at first she'd been delighted, but now needed to find out what it had been up to for the last 20 years and how she could encourage it to hang around. She'd called her mate Ruth. They had that kind of friendship. I'm like some oversexed butterfly emerging from a cocoon of frigidity, Val told Ruth somewhat lyrically. Are you sure it's not just cystitis? Ruth asked in her usual blunt way. Trust me, if the dishwasher had a nice head of hair, I might have tried to hump it, Val replied. Well, (laughs) you know what they say about bald appliances. The less hair, the bigger the... (laughs) Laughed Ruth. But seriously, Ruth, I'm demented, Val interjected. What should I do? I don't want it to disappear again from misuse, if you know what I mean. You really have to help me, Val pleaded. Shh, said Ruth. Why, Val whispered. No, shh, said Ruth. I'm not shouting, Val whispered back, getting annoyed. Oh, for fuck's sake, put the phone down, I'm sending you a link. Val smiled. She'd known Ruth was the right person to tell. Ruth knew about these things. Within minutes, the link appeared, which naturally Val had pressed straight away. If ever there was a time for instant gratification, this was it. Ah, so shh was an online shop dedicated to sexual pleasure. A woman's erotic emporium, read Val as she lingered on the homepage. She entered the Pleasure Dome. Blimey! Things had progressed in the last few years, Val thought, squirming slightly down into her seat as she moved her cursor over a myriad of toys, purely and utterly designed to give pleasure. Val felt a stir. She was so unused to the rush of pleasure at the core of her being that she almost moaned. Suddenly there was movement behind her and she closed her laptop at the same time that a teenage boy's voice asked, Oh, you doing something you shouldn't, eh, Mum? Her son, both ravishing and ravenous in equal measures, opened every cupboard door until he found his favourite fare. He then swaggered out of the room, popping crisps into his mouth and laughing at the idea of his mum getting up to no good. I'm off out, so don't do anything I wouldn't do. Cheeky little sod, she said quietly to herself, shaking her head. She then smirked. (laughs) If only he knew. If only he knew why she'd snapped shut her laptop when he'd suddenly appeared in the kitchen. But it never occurred to him that she, his mum, could even 
contemplate sex. She listened to him as he slammed the front door and stride down the path. The epitome of a cocky young man, so confident in his sexual swagger. Why couldn't women feel that way? Especially women like her, whose sexual reawakening after years of childcare, hard work and self-neglect had knocked her sideways. Her phone pinged. It was Ruth. Have you clicked yet? Val typed a reply. She could be honest with Ruth. Yes, but spoilt for choice. Ruth typed back. Click on the workshops. Taking a deep breath, Val opened her laptop, which buzzed back onto the sh website as if it were throwing her an online lifeline. She hovered over the workshops. Sexual health, sexual well-being, sexual permission, sexual positions, sexual personas. Was she submissive? Was she dominant? She threw up her hands more in excitement than exasperation. She didn't know. No one had ever asked her, not even herself. She could be anything she wanted. She knew that now. Val smiled a wide smile and clicked on a link that took her to a calendar of events. One jumped out at her. 30 Days of Orgasm Project. Val read on. A workshop encouraging women to spend 30 days reconnecting with their sexuality and to use orgasms as a method of mood enhancement. Oh, yes. This was exactly what she needed. She may be single. She may be older. She may be a mum. She may have lost her libido through stress, business and fatigue. But clearly, she wasn't the only one. And now it was back. She was never going to let it go again. Val blew air out of her cheeks. 30 fucking days. Sign me up. She crossed her legs and squeezed them firmly together as she envisaged the month ahead. What lay beyond that? Only shh could tell.